Okay, so we're going to wrap up section 2.4 today. Um, when you look at this problem and you want to take its derivative, it, it for sure would be easier if we would write the bottom as a power. So it's to the first power here and the third root, so 1 over 3. And then I believe I'm going to treat this as a quotient rule. You could take it to the top and treat it as a product rule, but let's do quotient rule. So the quotient rule says rho, so you rewrite the denominator, d high, so we want the derivative of the numerator, minus high d low, so we want the derivative of the denominator. And to take the derivative of the denominator, we're going to have to do chain rule. So the one-third comes down to the front of that quantity, and that's to the one less power. Then you do the derivative of that. So low d high minus high d low over low squared. So let's see what we get now. We have x squared plus 4 to the 1 third. Um, and all this, this and this and this can be multiplied together. So that's 2x, two 2 thirds x squared. Whoops. Times x squared plus 4 to the negative 2 thirds. All over x squared plus 4. That's a power raised to another power, so power to power we multiply. And then let's let's go ahead and factor out the lowest, the least powers. So I'm going to erase the top here. So in the top, the least powers is the negative two thirds. So we've got two terms, and both of those terms have a common factor of the x squared plus 4, so we're going to take out the least power of it, which is the negative 2 thirds, and then we write down what's left. So here in this first term, if you take out that term right there to the negative 2 thirds, remember factoring is like dividing, so this is where we started, and we divided, so we subtract the power that we're removing. So that's 3 thirds, which is 1. So all we're left with is x squared plus 4 to the first power. Minus, now let's look at this whole term here. This is all just one big product. And if we take out the x squared plus 4 to the negative 2 thirds, we're just left with 2 thirds x squared. all over x squared plus 4 to the 2 thirds. Alrighty. Um, let's think about moving this to the denominator and making its power positive. When we do that, the numerator will have x squared plus 4 minus 2 thirds x squared. So if we move that one down here to the bottom and make it positive, then I'll be multiplying like bases and I'll need to add their exponents. So in the denominator, we'll be left with x squared plus 4. And when we add those exponents, we're going to have to the 4 thirds power. Shiloh. My dog is being silly. Now let's see, we're going to combine these like terms. Positive 1 and negative 2 thirds is going to give us Shiloh. Positive 1 third x squared plus 4 over x squared plus 4 to the 4 thirds.
and the book is not going to like us leaving it like that. They're not going to like that one-third fraction being in the middle of another fraction. So they're going to go a long way to get rid of that. They're going to get a common denominator here, which is going to give us... Um, are you all okay with me calling that x squared over 1? So when I multiply these two fractions, I'm going to get x squared over 3 plus 12 over 3 all over x squared plus 4 to the 4 thirds. So that's x squared plus 12 over 3 all over x squared plus 4 to the 4 thirds, which is the same thing as that over 1 as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm going to have trouble getting the 4 thirds written there. So I told you all they were going to go a long way to get rid of that fraction in a fraction. So x squared plus 12 times 1 is just x squared plus 12. And in the denominator, 3 times all of that is 3 parenthesis x squared plus 4 to the 4 thirds. Okay, let's look at another one. Example 9. y equals big parenthesis 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 3 squared. Okay. This problem is different. We haven't handled one like this before. This is a big quantity raised to the second power. This is like some value raised to the second power. It's a big chain rule. So when we go to take its derivative, we'll bring this to down in front of the thing, rewrite the thing, make that two one less, and now we're ready to do the derivative of the inside part. You saw this. So that's a, uh, that's a quotient. So we're going to have to do the quotient rule. So I'm going to do a bracket. Quotient rule is low, d high, minus high, d low, all over low, squared. Okay. Um, I'm going to say that's 2 over 1. So we'll go ahead and distribute the 2. And inside these brackets, let's distribute the 3 and let's distribute the 2x. Rewrite the bottom for now. Okay, so I've still got this negative 1 that I need to distribute right here. I'm going to be a little bit lazy, and I'm going to handle it this way. I'm going to say it's plus the opposite opposite. Because when you multiply by a negative, what really happens is you change these signs. So I am no longer have a negative out here because I've changed my signs. Okay, so now we have 6x minus 2 times... Combine like terms in the big bracket, negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 9, all over, look what happens right here. This term multiplied by that term. They're the same. We are multiplying like bases. That's to the first power, and this is to the second. So when we multiply like bases, all we have to do is add their powers, add their exponents. I'm not thinking that that quadratic factors negative 27 and 2. The only factors of 27 are 3 and 9, and that won't give me a 2. So I think that's as far as we can go here. 
Okay, let's look at example 11. And this is the power of parentheses. How a little set of parentheses can change a whole problem. So all four of these that you're getting ready to see are super closely related. First, we have y equals, oops, I forgot the cosine. The cosine of 3x squared. So this is the chain rule problem. We've got the cosine of something other than just x. So when we take its derivative, it's the derivative of the cosine of that thing times the derivative of the angle there. So the answer is negative 6x sine 3x squared. B part is really, really similar, but it's cosine of 3 times x squared. All they did was added a set of parentheses, but it completely changed the problem. So as you look at this, you might think that's a product. It's this thing times this thing. These are two totally different functions that are being multiplied together. And I would agree, except when I think about this, there's no variable there. This is a constant term. I can do the cosine of 3 on my calculator in radian mode, and I can get an answer. So it's a constant. So whenever we have a constant and we want to take a derivative, we just rewrite the constant, and then we multiply by the derivative of the variable term. So this answer would be 2x times the cosine of 3. Oh, the power of parentheses. C part. It is the same thing. It's cosine of 3x squared, but this time it's the cosine of 3x squared. They just moved the parentheses, but they totally changed the problem. I would say, let's go ahead and work that out. That's going to be an easier way to go. That's the same thing as the cosine of 9x squared. So it is chain rule. It's cosine of something other than just x. So we're going to have to do chain rule. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine of that times the derivative of that. So it's negative 18 sine of 9x squared. Oops, I forgot my x. Negative 18x sine of 9x squared. Okay, D's just a little bit different. D is Y equals the cosine squared of X. Do you all remember that that's the same thing as the cosine of X squared? These are two different ways to write the same thing. And um, in this case, this is the friendlier form. So it's something raised to the second power, which is chain rule. So we would bring the two down to the front to the one less power times the derivative of cosine of x, which is negative sine x. So this answer is negative two cosine x sine x or negative two sine x cosine x. All right, last one of these. It is y equals the square root of the cosine of x. All right, we want to rewrite that friendlier. Chain rule, y prime equals 1 half cosine x to the minus one-half times the derivative of cosine x. Okay, these are going to get multiplied together. And this, whoops, this is going to go to the denominator and become positive. The other way you could write it is like that. Okay. 
here's one we've not seen before. You have f of x equals sine squared 4x. Okay, just like example D just a second ago, it would be nicer if we wrote it this way. So I'm going to have to do chain rule to take this derivative because it's something raised to a power. So it's 2 times that something to the 1 less. Now we're ready to take the derivative of that. But that is just like example um, 10a that we did just a second ago. It's a chain rule problem too. So when we go to take the derivative of sine x, you think, okay, I do cosine of the something, right? Derivative of sine is cosine of that 4x, and we haven't done the derivative of that yet. So did you see how the, the chain kept coiling? Kind of. So your final answer is multiply these two together. And that's it. Okay. So I just realized um, in the book, example 12 had a it was sine to the third power for us, so our answers are not the same. Okie dokie, last but not least, example 13. Find the equation of the tangent line to the graph f of x equals 2 sine x plus the cosine of 2x at the point pi comma 1. All right, find the equation of the tangent line. Well, we need the slope, which is the derivative. And we take a look at the whole problem. This is a sum of two different functions. So we'll take the derivative of the first function, and then we'll add it to the derivative of the second one. So the 2 is a constant. All we have to do is multiply by the derivative of the sine x plus... Um, the second function is a chain rule. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine of 2x times the derivative of the 2. So that is 2 cosine x minus 2 sine 2x. And we want the slope evaluated at the point pi comma 1. So we're going to plug a pi in 4x. And you could use your calculator. I'm going to use this unit circle. 0, pi, 2 pi. So I need this ordered pair. And I need this ordered pair. Whoops, not negative. Okay, um, cosine is x value. So the cosine of pi is negative 1. The sine is the y value, and the sine of 2 pi is 0. So the answer is negative 2 for the slope. Now they wanted the equation of the tangent line. So it's y minus, don't forget your point up here, the y coordinate is m times x minus the x coordinate. And then they say, determine all the values of x in the interval 0 to 2 pi, in which the graph has a horizontal tangent line. So we're not going to work all the way through this, but if it has a horizontal tangent line, that means its slope is 0, like the example earlier today. So we would do 0 equal to the derivative. So here's our simplified derivative. We would just set that equal to 0 and solve. 